Hello students, welcome to Statics. I'm Dr. Stewart. Today we're going to do an example for zero force members. This example is example 6.4 from, uh, from Hibbler's Statics book. And in this example, it asks us to use the method of joints to identify all the zero force members in this structure. Let's start by looking in at the structure that we're given and looking and identifying what are some things that we know, what are some things that we don't know. We can immediately see that we have some applied loading at point C and at point B. We also see that we have some support reactions at A and E. Right? So those are all locations that we have some kind, some level of information about. And what we need to do is we need to apply the method of joints to identify all the zero force members within this structure. So let's start with that by excluding the locations where we have support reactions as well as those locations where we had that applied loading, right? And then for all these remaining joints, joint D, F, G, and H, we want to apply the method of joints, and we want to see, do we have zero force members at, that joint, at, at the joints? Let's start with joint G, and let's create a free body diagram of joint G, freeing that joint from the entire structure, and creating a free body diagram where equilibrium should be maintained. If we go down and we create that diagram, we can see that we have three members in this joint, and within those three members, two of them, so that is FGH and FGF, so those, those two members, are collinear. And because those two are collinear, there's nothing, there's no force that is able to counteract or to negate the force GC. Do you see that? Because there are three members and two of them are collinear, there's no way to maintain equilibrium in the Y direction. The only way to maintain it would be if the force in GC is equal to zero. And that means that member GC is a zero force member. Simple as that. So now we've identified our first zero force member in this structure. And then let's go ahead and kind of note that on our free body diagram here that this member GC, that is a zero force member. Let's move on to another joint. Uh, let's. The next joint we'll do here is joint D. Let's go and create a free body diagram for, doing, for joint D. And what do we see? We see the same thing, that we have three members, and two of those members are collinear, member DC and member DE, right? Since they are collinear, equal and opposite to each other, there's nothing that is going to counteract or there's nothing to maintain equilibrium between, oh, oh, hold on. There we go. There's nothing to maintain equilibrium in the X prime direction, right? So the only way to maintain that equilibrium would be if the force DF is equal to zero. That means member DF is a zero force member, right? So now let's go up to our free body diagram here, and then we're going to say that member DF, that member is a zero force member, right? Now let's continue with another joint. Let's do joint F next. Do joint F next. Let's create a free body diagram for joint F. 
And let's note that we, we just found that df was equal to zero, so we're gonna set that df equal to zero here, right? Now, at this joint, since that, that df is zero, this joint becomes, in essence, a three-member joint, right? And in these three members, right, two of them are collinear, equal and opposite to each other. And that would require, again, that, or, or, or that would require here that the force in FC is equal to zero, so member FC is a zero force member. All right. So now let's go up to our diagram here. And member FC is this link. So now that is a zero force member, right? So now let's um, do the last joint. I think our last joint we have here is joint H. Let's evaluate joint H. Now, if we were thinking about just the geometric symmetry of this structure, we would think that whatever is happening on this side should also happen on that side of the structure if we only focused on geometry. But zero force members, it's a combination of not only the geometry, but also the loading conditions. And we can see in, the, in this structure that our loading is not symmetric in this structure. We're loading asymmetrically, right? So let's, with that in mind, look at joint H and then see what happens. So at joint H, if we go down here, at joint H, we would have four members of that we have information that we don't have any information about. So there's four unknowns. That's too many unknowns for us to solve. Joint H. And for symmetry, we would think that FHC would be equal to zero. But before we do that, let's check joint B. And joint B, that is a joint that's the closest joint to H, and it's also where we have external loading. So let's create a free body diagram for joint B. And when we do that, we see that, hey, we actually have, uh, it's a three member body, right? One, two, three members. However, we have an external loading that allows us to build or to carry load in this HC term. So now HC is equal to two kilonewtons. And then from that, we'll find that there are no more uh, remaining uh, um, zero force members in this structure. That when we go back to joint H, then that then those all of those joint H members exist, and then subsequently the rest of our structure exists. So now we can finally create our free body diagram without removing those, or, or not without, but we're saying removing those zero force members. So this is the resulting structure that we, that we, that we need to analyze. All right. So that concludes this problem. Um, really the trick of the trade with zero force members is to apply that three member rule to, um, to look for co-linear members, to look for members that have no opportunity to carry load. And those will be the zero force members. Uh, thanks for watching the video and look out for the next example.